What's going on, y'all? Shaman King Bishop checking in from the house. It has been, wow, man, about four months since I've done a video. And I want to kind of tell y'all what's been going on. Um, so those of you who do not know me, because I can tell y'all, man, it's crazy. Like, I stopped doing videos. I stopped doing videos because I had a lot going on, um, trucking-wise, not personal-wise, but trucking-wise. Which kind of affects you personally, but it, it was mainly trucking. And I'll touch on that. But what's crazy is the, the subscriber list has went nuts since um, I stopped making videos. I'm trying to find my vape, y'all. I don't know where it's at. I'm going to find it, though. Everybody else take their time on videos. I'm going to take my time on mine, too. You know what I mean? It's around here somewhere. There you go. All right. So, um... Channels went crazy since since then. And so um I wanna kinda give y'all a heads up on what's been going on with me and uh kinda what happened. Um so basically where what happened is when I turned in White Lightning, which was if those of you who do not know, that was my truck that I leased from quality. Okay. Um, I was, I'm sorry, I had a little break, but um, I had white lightning. I turned white lightning in, and um, well, basically, this is the way I look at it. And now that I'm more experienced, I will tell you guys this with all confidence that um, I'm leaking juice. Um, that whether or not the company that you are leasing for is willing to tell you or not, which most of them are not because it will scare you away. I'm a firm believer that a no lease is, um, no lease is um, primarily more beneficial for the driver. Um, it's more beneficial for the carrier and the company in which you are leasing for. Uh, and I will give you an example. So with quality carriers, quality carriers works with, or quality companies, whatever they call themselves. So quality works with, you know, 30 to 40 different companies. And the way it works is this. <clears throat> why do those companies, why do, why do those, those carriers decide to partner with quality? Well, the reason why the carriers do is because now they don't have to hold truck inventory for a driver who may or may not come. Um, if that carrier decides to purchase 50 trucks and they do not get those trucks filled, they are still paying for those trucks. Um, so quality provides a convenient option for them to not have to keep inventory of trucks for drivers that may or may not come. The reason why it's beneficial to quality to work with carriers is because now they have these trucks and the more carriers they get, they will get these drivers. They are not worried about uh, the drivers coming, um, but they also don't have to worry about freight, which makes the driver stay at a specific company because they will allow you to switch. Now, I just saw a video where they were charging you now. But before, they would allow you to switch with no issue. All they had to do was call them and you could switch. Tell them, hey, it's not working here. I'm going to another carrier. Um, so it's convenient for them because they know the drivers are going to come. They can make money and not have to worry about freight because freight is the carrier's job, not quality's job. They can care less about the carrier. I mean, about the carrier's freight. And also, too, their money is guaranteed because... They're going to get their money off the top. The relationship is saying that this carrier is going to allow or they are going to take quality's money off the top of your settlement, no matter what. So their money is guaranteed in these trucks. And honestly, the more people who do not complete leases at quality makes them more money. Let me give you an example. Because you take a truck... That is, they used to do it by year. Like I said, I've been out of the truck now for a while now. Um, so I got a 2016 truck. 
That truck still had seven years on it with 695 miles. I mean, $695 a week. Well, the driver who got it first, who was a Western Express driver, who got it in 2015, had that same contract for $695 a week for seven years. So he kept the truck for a year, year and a half or whatever. He gives the truck back. Well, now quality doesn't say, well, there's only five and a half years left on the truck. They say, no, why would we do that? We're going to give the next driver the same seven years. Now, I got out of White Lightning. Um, I kept all the chrome on the truck. I kept my LED lights. I kept everything that I put into the truck, maintenance. It was Everything was up kept. Uh, I cleaned the truck out very clean. The truck was very well maintained. As you guys know, I took care of my truck. But the next driver who got into that truck, which I'm sure someone in already, they got a seven-year deal for $695 a week. So it's more profitable for them if you don't complete the lease. Um, and then that's the way it goes. So um, it, that's why I say it, it's, to me, you have to use the lease for what it's worth. If you find a good lease with a truck that you can eventually own one day, that's great. Um they just few and far between. It's not saying it's not out there, but it's few and far between. So use the lease. If you're in a walkaway lease, take the money you make from the truck, you put it away so that you can get out of that truck as soon as possible and get into a truck that you can actually afford to purchase. Um, it's the same thing that if you are in a, a, a lease that is two years or two and a half years, uh, if you're not going to own that truck or the residual balance on that truck is going to be at a massive amount, like for instance, if you're drunk, buying a um, truck and the truck is purchase price is $90,000 and you sign a year long lease, that means after your year long lease, your residual balance is still going to be like $60,000. You say, okay, well, am I going to keep this truck after that or do I need to save the money I want to save so I can get into a truck that may only cost me $40,000? And it could be the same truck, the same year, same make, same model, same condition. That's a decision you have to make. So, that's all I'm saying. Um, be wise with your leases now. Um, would I lease all over again if I had to? Absolutely, because I have the right mentality to get in the lease, get out of the lease, and get what I need to get from the lease. Leasing is a great option. Don't get me wrong. It, for a person who is business savvy, who wants to be a business owner, who wants to be an owner operator, completely and independently an owner operator, um, and that doesn't have the finance, the financial backing or the credit backing, lease is nothing wrong with leasing. You just got to lease for the purpose. You have to lease for the purpose. So, with that being said, sorry, y'all. Um, with that being said, this lease for the purpose. But outside of that, uh, you guys know I turned in White Lightning. Uh, after I turned in White Lightning, um, I was with, I left Interstate, as you know, and I went to Great Wide. On the Great Wide, I was pulling van, doing power only. If you saw the power only videos, I was pulling for Great Wide then. Um, the freight at Great Wide was horrible for van. Uh, it might've just been where I would lived. But I was eating more off of other people's low boy like Landstar than I was off Great Wise. It was horrible for Van Freight. Um, so, and when I turned in White Lightning, um, I went and got into a truck that I could purchase, uh, that I could afford to purchase. It wasn't like White Lightning, seven years, blah, blah, blah. It was actually a truck that after two, two years and three months, I would have had completely paid off. Unfortunately, the truck was having major um, mechanical issues that it would have been more beneficial for me not to invest the money in the truck than to keep it, unfortunately. So that lost time and money. So what I did was I went local, and I've been local ever since. Um, I hate local work. If you have watched my old videos, then you know I hate local work. You work hard as crap local. Um, the money is not as good over the road as over the road. Um, but like I said, you give up the money to be local, to be home every day, which I, I honestly don't feel like you should have to choose between the money and being home every day. I think there should be a medium, but um, what a lot of times the, the gap is so huge 
that it kind of pushes you to say, oh man, I really like being home or I really need to go back and make my money over the road. It's unfortunate that it, that is, it is that way, but that's just the truth. So, um, I've been local ever since. It's been about three and a half, four months now. Um, and I, I don't like it. I was pulling the tanker. I was pulling uh, asphalt and um, emulsion and oil. And uh, I worked hard as crap <clears throat> having to load all my loads, offload all my loads. Um, they want you in the job early in the morning. They don't want you to leave. I mean, you're in there for a long time. You're getting paid by the hour, yes. Does by the hour mean more money? In some cases. But if you know anything about hourly work at any point, at a certain time, at a certain amount of hours in a week, you stop making money. So, for instance, like my mark has always been somewhere around like 55 hours. After 55 hours, I stop making money. I start making like $7 an hour because taxes eat you up so bad. So why am I going to go to work for 65 hours a week and only make another $70 than I would have made had I spent that 10 hours at home? Me, I come local to be home. I don't come local because um, to, I don't come local to chase money because I know I can't do it the same way as I do over the road. Um, so it doesn't make sense to me to come local and work hard. So as a result of that, I made the decision to go back over the road. And I will be taking you guys through that process. So I wanted to post this video early so that you guys know this was coming up for me. Uh, today is Thursday. Well, it's Thursday morning. It's like 4 in the morning. Thursday morning. Uh, I'll be leaving out of Virginia on Saturday, heading to orientation. I'll be driving. It's about a 1,000-mile trip for me to drive to orientation. I decided to drive instead of fly because I want to take all my stuff with me so I can take advantage of, um, you know, being able to hit the road immediately and not have to worry about coming home to get little stuff. So with me driving, I can take everything with me, everything I need. Some of the small stuff like pillows and comforters that you can't take with you on the plane, you know, but you can you can have with you if you drive. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, and so that's what I'm going to do. And I don't, I don't do the bus thing. I'll never do the bus thing again. I don't know if you guys remember, but uh, I had some horrible bus stories. My first time going to night, and uh, I vowed that I will not get on the Greyhound. I told this company I'm going with now that even if they didn't pay for the rental car, I would pay for it because I'm just not going to ride the bus. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to do it. So with that being said, I am going into another lease, um, and I'm going to keep you guys up on my lease, and you know, and I'll give you the details. I want to make sure everything is ironed out. I have been hired, of course, got an orientation date. They've already rented my rental car, blah, 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 but uh, until I get in there and everything is smoothed out and I get into the truck, that's when I'll start letting you guys know information. But as always, man, I appreciate y'all for watching. I will check back in with y'all a couple days. It's your man King Bishop, man. Keep subscribing, y'all. Love y'all. Peace.